employees of the Denver Post continued protests of its hedge fund, hedge fund, hedge fund owner Alden Global this week. Demonstrations at the Denver office and at Alden headquarters in New York called for the sale of the paper. Meanwhile, editorial page editor Chuck Plunkett resigned, in addition to longtime editors Dana Caulfield and Larry Rickman. Dean Singleton also resigned from the board of the paper, and Dave Krieger was fired as editor of the Boulder Daily Camera after speaking out against Alden as well. Patty, this has been absolutely amazing to watch these last couple of weeks. Uh, major players leaving the post, uh, a firing of Dave Krieger, protests in front of headquarters. Take your pick. What are we to, to make of what's going on right now at the Post? Well, it's all bad news in the news business. The protest in Adams County really didn't affect that many people because no one sees the Denver Post up in its printing plant where it's now located. But it's been a wild ride for a month now since Chuck Plunkett led the editorial page, the perspective section, talking about why news matters. He wasn't fired for that, but he wound up uh, getting disappeared because he wanted to write another editorial and this time that they had put him under rules he had to run it by someone because he didn't have a publisher who would look at it before um, so he left last week right as we weren't taping this two really good experienced editors left in disgust at the same time and Dean Singleton asked that his name be taken off he's gone now too and he gave us a great interview just talking about how bad it is there and how shameless Alden Global is. Now, unfortunately, he actually was the person who wound up selling the company, a ma majority of the company, to the people who are involved with Alden Media. But Alden Global is like Honey Badger. It, Alden Global just doesn't care. So they were shamed at a protest in New York City because, of course, it's not just the Post and the camera involved here. It's papers across the country that are being decimated. And people may not like the Post, but they will sure miss it if it's gone because where do they think news reporting comes from? You might get it on Facebook, but someone has to originally report it. And The Post is doing an incredible job in very, very tough times. David, I saw a variety of things on social media that talked about the argument of what is the better way to support the Denver Post. Is it to actually join a boycott and, and uh, cancel your su subscription, being, uh, assuming you have one, or is it to keep supporting because you're not just supporting all in global but you're supporting the the workers who are still trying to put out a great paper doing their very best I, I didn't know where I fell on that when you saw those kinds of arguments and other issues what did you think I, I think there are good arguments on on both sides of that um, for me actually my post subscription has expired but they, they keep on sending it to me as, as often happens and as I've, I've gone to renew I just can't get over this the sort of final insult to injury they add which is their contract term says and for the privilege of you getting the black friday day after thanksgiving newspaper full of ads we're going to charge you extra for that and we will shorten the subscription so when we say we're selling you a year-long subscription we actually intend to cut that uh, because we're giving you the privilege of buying this black friday uh... full of ads thing and other special issues they do and you can call and opt out of it but for me, that's just the last try. I can't count the lines, so I'm working on ways to try to get real news and, and pay for it without, you know, in a future where the Denver Post is becoming less and less. Uh, I'm a paid subscriber now to Colorado Politics, a great weekly paper that, of course, has online updates all the time. And I'm uh, reading the Denver Business Journal now, and, and we're, we're flirting, and I'm going to, they're eventually going to get me uh, <laughs> to put down real money and pay for that. And, you know, the, the business coverage in the Post is, is now close to useless. So the Denver Business Journal does have, with Ed Sealover, among other great writers, lots of good stuff. So we got, there's a good source for politics and, and government, a good source for business news. And in terms of the sports reporting, which the Post still does a respectable amount of, um, you can get that from lots of other places, including uh, C my, the CBS Sports app uh, that I do, which gives me more Rockies and uh, Avalanche material than I could possibly digest read. Probably a good time for us to ask the CBS Sports app of an underwriter of uh, yeah. supporting <laughs> Colorado Inside Out. Uh, Eric, between the ideas of uh, how to protest as a citizen, I'm also wondering if there's more conversations in perhaps an office that includes Phil Anschutz. Because if right now there's editors dropping like flies, re resigning, I got to believe if you wanted to, maybe not so much buy the post, because if Alden Global's not going to sell, you can't buy it. 
But if you're going to bolster another option, this seems like a right time, but I'm not a billionaire, so I don't know how to exactly handle these things. What about yourself? What do you think? Not a billionaire either, and <laughs> if I know anything about Phil Anschutz, it's that he keeps his own counsel, plays the cards very close to the best. I mean, there have been so many rumors about his interest in the Post or his interest potentially in an alternative to the Post if the Post, if when the Post truly craters. Uh, if I know anything about Phil Anschutz, it's that he's a master at uh, picking up distressed properties, but he picks them up on the cheap. Uh, and the, the Alden boys are not willing, at least at this point in time, until it gets much, much worse, to sell cheap. And I'm told the difference, you know, we're not talking about a $5 million or $10 million difference that can be negotiated. We're talking about a 70 or $80 million difference between perhaps the ballpark in which an ant shoots might be interested in the ballpark that Alden is dreaming about. Uh, we'll see. Use the word bloodletting. That is the accurate word of, of, of what is going on here. The people that were lost are really good people. Uh, Dana Caulfield in particular, somebody who I, I've, I just think is an editor, has been an editor's editor, uh, and, and is lost to the paper. Obviously, Larry Rickman, obviously Chuck Plunkett, who we've talked about before, Dave Krieger, uh, run the list. I do not know when a downward spiral becomes a death spiral. Uh, they are clearly in a downward spiral at this point for the reasons David talked about, but the content of the paper is thinner and thinner all the time. There are more and more alternative sources, yet subscription rates go up and up, so fewer people subscribe, so they therefore can charge less to their advertisers uh, and, and receive less advertising revenue. And it just can, and, and therefore there's less content, et cetera, and and it just spirals down, and the spiral is picking up speed, and I don't know at what point it becomes irreversible. Penn, as you see the variety of responses, you saw employees at the New York headquarters, you saw employees here in Denver. We've seen a variety of comments on uh, from the people who resigned. In fact, it's a, it's a good time for me to remind our viewers, John Caldera is going to have a, a great interview with. Chuck Plunkett right after this episode. So if this topic is of interest, you're going to want to stay tuned for that at 830. Penn, as you see the various responses, I guess, what's your response as a community member, uh, an influential community member, that what, what is the best move to respond? You know, I, I think if you were holding out hope that things were going to get better at the post, you now realize you, you are deluding yourselves. Uh, the, the Alden gang has made it clear they're going to try to wring as much money out of the post as they can. The irony is, going back to Eric's you know, description, uh, there's no way anyone steps up and wants to buy this because they're asking too much. And by the time they become more reasonable with the price, there's not going to be left, anything left to purchase. So no, not Phil Anschutz or anybody else will want to step in. And so what many of us are doing is we're beginning to terminate our Denver Post subscriptions. You know, you can get the New York Times, you can get the Washington Post if you want a broader perspective. Denver Business Journal, you've got Westward, um, you've got Colorado Politics, and frankly, you've got a lot of the other local neighborhood newspapers that sometimes give you a better flavor for the zoning and land use and other issues taking place in the area where you live, and they're all free. And so, you know, we've, I think we've about reached the point um, where the death spiral, it's begun and we're well in the middle of it. Um, I don't know what Alden's long-term play is. Maybe they just want to go bust and then file for bankruptcy and walk away from any debt they're carrying, like with pension programs or something like that, and call it a day. But I, I think if you're responsible, if you care about the post, it's probably time to give up the ghost, um, cancel your subscription, and go do something else with your dollars.